Okay guys, I'm not gonna lie, studying for the GMAT is hard. I just wrapped up week nine, month two of my current GMAT prep. I have now completed over 1400 practice problems, both on McDouche, as well as in this official guide prep book. I have also now taken three practice exams using McGoosh's mock exams. So let's dive into how I'm doing. So first of all, my scoring. As I alluded to before, this GMAT prep has proved a lot more challenging than I initially was anticipating. Of the 1400 problems I've completed, I've only gotten about 900 of these correct, but this number is a bit deceptive. So 1100 of these 1400 practice problems come from McGoosh. And of these 1,100, over 500 of these are classified as hard or very hard problems. As I mentioned in the first video of this series, the actual GMAT exam is adaptive. This means that as you take the test, the next question is determined by your performance on the previous question. So if you get a question right, the next question will most likely be a little bit more challenging. And if you get the question wrong, the next question will be a little bit easier. This process of question selection is algorithm based. So it's not necessarily as straightforward as I just explained it, but that is generally how it works. I've tried to do a lot of research about the GMAT and the exam, and a lot of resources say that you really only get hard or very hard questions on the exam if you're performing extremely well. One resource I saw said you'd be hard pressed to get more than five hard questions per section on the exam. This means that the best questions to practice are medium difficulty questions because this is a good average of the type of question that you can expect to see on the exam. So as I said before, 550 of the 1100 questions I've taken on Magoosh have been hard or very hard. Of these 555, I've gotten 51% of these correct. So 270 of the about 500 questions I've missed so far on this prep are very challenging questions. So I might not be doing necessarily as bad as it looks, which I can admit it looks really bad. I'm definitely struggling a lot more on the hard slash very hard quant problems compared to the verbal problems. For verbal, I've actually gotten about two thirds of the hard and very hard questions correct. So this is a pretty optimistic sign moving forward and shows that the area to focus on to see the most improvement would be in the quant section. So now that we've kind of discussed the practice problems, let's dive into the mock exams. The three mock exams I've taken so far all come from Magoosh. As we discussed before, the actual GMAT is adaptive, but the practice exams on Magoosh do not have this algorithm and aren't. So I think it's a pretty easy argument to make that the scores that I've been receiving on the GMAT practice exams on Magoosh are not a true indicator of how I will perform on the real deal. So these are my scores so far so you can see what I mean. So these exams are actually listed in reverse chronological order. Uh, so it shows that the most recent exam I took, which is after two months of day in, day out work, I got a 440 on, which is absolutely pathetic. The highest score so far out of the three I've taken is a 560, which is still very bad and nowhere near what I want to score but I had to be somewhat happy with it just because it was my first stab at the exam. Honestly, I was extremely discouraged this last Sunday when I finally got through the practice exam, hit submit, and saw a 440. This meant that my score had dropped over 100 points since the last practice exam I took, and this again was after several hours of work every single day. This definitely is not how it's supposed to work. You're not supposed to see your score decrease every time you take the exam. So I decided to go a little bit more into the details of this last practice exam. It's extremely embarrassing to say, but I got an abysmal 29% of the quant section correct. But what's most important to mention is that out of the 31 questions on the quant, 14 of these were very hard questions. And with that, the 17 other questions on the quant section were hard. So please keep in mind that earlier I mentioned that most likely you will only see hard or very hard questions on the actual exam if you are absolutely crushing the GMAT. And on the last practice exam I took, literally every single question was hard or very hard. So it's not a very accurate representation of what the quant section would look like on a real exam. I didn't receive any easy questions, any medium questions, and as I'm sure you can imagine, when you're going through, you're doing hard questions and then very hard questions, 
you get very discouraged and that definitely affects your performance moving forward onto other questions. But I mean, I still did get 29% of these correct. And sure, some of these I probably got lucky on, but others I was able to work through the problems and get them correct using my own methods and what I've learned. So that is a very positive sign. Another positive is that on the verbal section of this practice exam, I still got 67% of the questions correct. And of the 36 questions on the verbal section, 17 of these were very hard. So if almost half of the questions on that verbal section were very hard, which are questions you are very unlikely to see on the actual exam, and I still was able to get two thirds of all the questions correct, I think that is a very good sign. And again, shows that my, my verbal section is definitely my strong suit as of right now. So now I kind of want to talk about how I feel. Unfortunately, this analysis shows that the Magoosh practice exams really aren't the best. They certainly did a very good job of discouraging me before I really dove deeper into the analysis of the questions. Over the last few weeks, I honestly have felt terrible about my progress on the GMAT before I did research into uh, the actual questions I was receiving. Never in my life had I put so much time and effort into something to see literally zero positive results. As I've said several times in this video, the results of the practices exams and even kind of the overall percentages of my practice problems aren't a true indicator of the progress I'm making. Yes, I certainly still have a very long way to go with respect to the quant as well as the verbal, but just because I'm not getting a high percentage of the questions correct doesn't mean I'm not making substantial progress every single day. The most important thing is that each day I get just 1% better. It is so vital that I don't get discouraged and I remain confident that my hard work will pay off because it always does. Moving forward, I do plan on taking one of the official GMAT practice exams in the next month or so. There's only a few of these practice exams that are offered, so it's a good idea to save them up and that's why I haven't taken them so far. But I think that in a month from now, I will be three months into the prep and it'll be a really good idea for me not just to maybe be a confidence boost for me to see my score actually improve, but it also could be a reality check. Right now, while I'm making this video, it's really easy for me to say, oh, this is a very hard problem. I don't really need to worry about that. But at the end of the day, I do need to worry about that. I do still want to be confident and comfortable when these hard and very hard questions come up on the exam. You guys know I plan on crushing this exam. And in order to do that, I need to be comfortable when these questions come my way. So although I was discouraged before, I'm not discouraged right now. And I think honestly, as much of this is a very technical learning process, so much of it is mental and knowing and learning how to understand your brain and how it best works. I've been at this now for over 60 days and I've been very proud that I have stayed as committed as I have. It's really not that easy to commit two hours every single day to work on this on top of my job and consulting working on this YouTube channel and trying to maintain a somewhat positive social life. So I am very proud of myself that I've made it this far. And again, it's now been nine weeks. Uh, so I think the habit is definitely established. But again, I just need to stay consistent and make those 1% improvements every single day. So thank you so much for watching all this video. If you're still watching, I really do appreciate you. I hope you enjoyed the transparency on my end. I really didn't want to put up a facade of how I was feeling and just show, oh yeah, I'm absolutely crushing it when that's not necessarily the case. I told you guys I was going to take you along for the full raw process of studying for the GMAT and this is just part of the process. So with that said, if you have any questions at all, you can reach out to me on Instagram right here at Galbraith. I'd love to help you guys out and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.